Hello and welcome to Gary Teachers Maths. I'm continuing to go through the Edexcel 2019 Maths GCSE Higher Tier Paper 1. And this is question 21 and it's about functions. So what we're given is two functions. We're given f of x equals 3x minus 1 and we're given that g of x equals x squared plus 4. And what we've been asked to do is find f minus 1 of x, which is the inverse function of f. Um, so the easiest way to do this is if you say, in place of the f of x there, if you say let y equal 3x minus 1, and then rearrange it to make x the subject. So if we do that, we can first of all add 1 to both sides. If we add 1 to both sides, then we'll end up with y plus 1 equals 3x. And then we'd now need to divide both sides by 3, which means we would end up with x over 3, y plus 1 over 3. The 3s would cancel. And what that would give us would be that x is equal to y plus 1 over 3. And then for the inverse function now, we simply replace the y in this equation by x. And we can say that f minus 1 of x is actually y plus 1, sorry, replaced the y, as I say, by the x, would be x plus 1 over 3. And we've done it. Uh, the idea of an inverse function is such that if we had two, um, two sets of numbers, we would have, the, say, if we take a, a number in this one, which we could call the domain, and this is the range. And so if we took, the, say, the number, if we took the number two in this, and we applied f of x to it, we'd have 3 times 2 is 6, take away 1, would take us to 5. So if we do f of x to the number 2, so f of x, if we apply that function to it, it would map it on to number 5 in the range. If we do the inverse function, it takes us in the opposite direction. So we can see that if we started with number five and we added one to it, we'd get six. And then if we divided by three, it would indeed take us back to two. And that's why it's the inverse function. It takes you back to where you started. So it's the opposite of doing the initial function, the opposite of doing f of x. Um, okay. so. We're, we've then got this second problem, which is given that f of g of x equals 2g f of x, show this quadratic equation. Okay, so what we need to do is find um, f of g of x. Now, what we would do for that is we've got our f of x there. And we've got our g of x. So f of g of x is basically if we start with the f of x there, but then whenever we see the x, we actually put into it the g of x function there. So I can say, well, that would be 3. And I'm going to open a bracket and into that. I'm going to put in the g of x function. So I'm going to put in 3x squared plus 4. And then I've got minus 1 from my f of x function there. So minus 1. And uh, if I multiply that out, I would get 3x squared plus 12 take away 1. So that's simply multiplying the 3 into the brackets. And then that would give me 
just tidying that up, 3x squared plus 11. Okay, and if we also um, find g of f of x, so we can say, doing that in the same way, g of f of x means starting with the g function there, but wherever we see x, so here we can see the x squared, wherever we see x, we put into it the f of x function. So we put into it 3x minus 1. So we can say that that would be equal to, um, in brackets, 3x minus 1 all squared plus 4. So I'm going to multiply or square out that bracket. So I'll show that by putting two brackets next to each other. And if I multiply these out in the standard way, I get 3x times 3x is 9x squared, 3x times minus 1 is minus 3x, minus 1 times 3x is minus 3x again, and minus 1 times minus 1 is plus 1, and we've still got the plus 4 there. So that's going to give me 9x squared minus 6x plus 5. And in fact, we're told we've got 2g of f of x, so it's going to follow that 2gf of x is actually I'm just multiplying this but through by 2 is 18x squared minus 12x plus 10. And we're told that that equals the f of g of x, which we've worked out here. So I'm going to equate that to it. I'm going to say equals 3x squared plus 11. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the 3x squared from the 18x squared. That's going to give me 15x squared um, minus the 12x. And if I take away 11 from both sides, it's going to give me minus 1. And that's going to be equal to zero because I'm going to be left with nothing on the right hand side of that equation. And we've done it. I hope that's been helpful to you. If it has, please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And for more help of this sort, uh, look at our website, which is bestmathstutors.co.uk. Thanks for watching.